One of the worst parts of this year's U.S. presidential election was how the candidacy of Donald Trump gave a platform and a megaphone to some of the most vile elements of American society. But one of the best parts of this year's election was how, by amplifying those harmful elements, it exposed them to mainstream scrutiny for the first time that I can remember. Didn't wind up making a difference in the result of the election, unfortunately, but you know the old saying, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, all hope in everything. Anyway, one of those harmful elements is rape culture. Rape culture is not a new concept, despite some anti-feminists insisting otherwise. Rape culture is an environment in which rape is prevalent and sexual violence against women is normalized and excused in the media and popular culture. That definition comes from the Marshall University Women's Center's webpage, which is a great starting point for learning about this subject. If you're looking for something a bit more in-depth, I would recommend this book. Transforming a Rape Culture, edited by Emily Buchwald, Pamela Fletcher, and Martha Raw, which was published in 1993, by the way. The Marshall University Women's Center's webpage has a list of attitudes and behaviors that perpetuate rape culture, many of which Donald Trump has been demonstrating through his words and deeds for decades. But for our purposes, let's focus on one particular example, the infamous Billy Bush tape where Trump is heard bragging about how easy it is to assault women when you're a star. The tape begins with Trump bragging about unsuccessfully trying to sleep with a married woman. Then he goes on to boast that when you're a star, you can just start kissing women and they let you do it. You can do anything, even, quote, grab them by the pussy. Following the release of the tape, Trump attempted to excuse his behavior by dismissing it as, quote, locker room talk. Someone dismissive of the concept of rape culture might point out that Donald Trump insists that he has never actually done any of the things that he brags about doing on the Billy Bush tape. One might also argue that these are the terrible attitudes of just one person, and they don't prove that rape culture is a valid concept when applied to the United States as a whole. Unfortunately, these arguments are refuted by the facts. The United States is a rape culture, and the reaction to the Billy Bush tape by a significant portion of the American people proves it. Let's start with Trump's explanation that what we hear on the Billy Bush tape is simply, quote, locker room talk. I'm going to give Trump's words on that tape the most charitable reading possible and imagine that Trump has never actually done the sorts of things that he describes himself doing on that tape. For the sake of argument, I'm going to assume that what we hear Donald Trump saying on that tape is nothing more than, quote, locker room talk. Even with that assumption in place, we still have Donald Trump bragging to his fellow men about how, thanks to his celebrity, he can force himself on women and molest them at will and get away with it. If Donald Trump doesn't actually do those sorts of things to women, then he's making it up. He's bragging about imaginary sexual assaults to his fellow men because he assumes, correctly as it turns out, judging by the reactions of the other men on that tape, that they will respond with approval and admiration. What was that definition of rape culture again? Don't go far, I'm going to need you again in a second. Now let's consider how people responded to Trump's locker room talk excuse. True, many of us didn't buy it, but many of us did. In fact, many of us echoed it ourselves, saying that we and other men that we know talk about women that way all the time. So not only was Trump correct when he assumed that his bragging about being able to sexually assault women would be met by the approval and the admiration of the other men on that Access Hollywood bus, many of us stepped forward and said that we do the exact same thing all the time. So if we live in a society where people regularly brag about sexually assaulting others in order to impress people, and we do it so regularly and are so comfortable with it that we seem to not understand why other people are upset by it, how might you describe such a society? And to anyone who would still argue that rape culture is not a valid way of looking at American society, let me reiterate that those who accepted and repeated Donald Trump's locker room talk excuse have already admitted that we live in such a culture, a culture where people feel at liberty to brag about committing sexual assault in order to impress their buddies. Whether or not they are actually committing these crimes is beside the point. The crime of sexual assault is taken so lightly 
that it's considered praiseworthy to claim that you do it. And if you have already admitted that we live in such a society, you have admitted that we live in... But wait, someone might object. According to that definition, a rape culture is not merely an environment where rape is excused and normalized, but where rape is prevalent. And if we are assuming for the sake of argument that Trump and others who engage in locker room talk aren't actually committing the sexual assaults they brag about committing, how can we say that rape is prevalent in the United States? Well, we can say that rape is prevalent in the United States because we have crime statistics testifying to that fact. According to the Bureau of Justice Statistics, in the year 2014, the most recent year for which I could find data, there were 284,350 rapes and sexual assaults reported in the U.S. To put that number in perspective, that same year there were 33,599 total gun-related deaths, according to the Centers for Disease Control. There were also 47,055 drug overdose deaths that year. Again according to the CDC. The number of gun deaths in the U.S. is considered by many of us to be a national tragedy, and the federal government has been conducting a so-called war on drugs since the Nixon administration, and yet in 2014 there were 8.5 times as many rapes and sexual assaults reported as there were gun deaths, and six times as many rapes and sexual assaults reported as there were drug overdose deaths. Just in case that isn't pervasive enough for you, let me present for your consideration one final bit of information also from the Bureau of Justice Statistics. On average, an estimated 211,200 rapes and sexual assaults went unreported to police each year between 2006 and 2010. Although serious violent crime was generally less likely to go unreported to the police than simple assault, a higher percentage of rape or sexual assault 65% then simple assault, 56% victimizations went unreported over the five-year period. So take the 284,350 rapes and sexual assaults reported in 2014 and assume there were at least another 200,000 that occurred but weren't reported. That's nearly half a million rapes and sexual assaults in the United States in a year. An environment where rape is prevalent and sexual violence against women is normalized and excused in the media and popular culture. That's us. And Donald Trump is our mascot. And our next president. Hey folks, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And also please consider helping me to make more videos like this one by supporting this channel through Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash steveshives to become a patron. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.